As you drive along the A50 between Stoke-on-Trent and Ashbourne, you may have noticed a strange castle-like structure in the field alongside the road. This is known as Vernon's Folly, and it's a Grade 2 listed building, dating back to 1723. It was built by Lord George Vernon, the owner of Sudbury Hall at the time. The original purpose of this is as a deer coat, and what it did is it offered a secure enclosure for deer, so shelter during the harsh winter months, and a vantage point for the hunters. And it's changed quite a lot over the years. In this painting from 1748, you can actually see the deer coat, and we can see that it's white. At this point, it's got corner towers and OG roofs, which are painted white and topped with golden finials. And this painting is crucial, because it captures the deer coat just before the significant alterations were made in the 1750s. You can actually see remnants of the white wash, or the limestone wash that was used to paint it white, still on the bricks today. Some investigations and old maps suggest the presence of additional structures within the central compound, including a possible deer barn that's depicted in an 18th century estate plan. Although much of the internal features have been lost or altered over time, remnants of brickwork and construction scars hint at the deer coat's original grandeur. The walls around the outside of the deer coat were actually designed to keep the deer in, which would have made sense if there was a barn inside, then there would have been a courtyard as well for the deer, and it would have been somewhere for them to shelter in the winter. The early 19th century brought more changes to the folly the timber palisades were replaced with sturdy walls, and a turreted sham gatehouse was added. Now this gatehouse served no practical purpose but to enhance the visual appeal, giving the impression of a grand entrance to a larger, fortified structure. At this point, it looked like a castle, with red brick and sandstone dressings. It featured a gatehouse, four angled turrets, and a curtain wall that enclosed the large square space. On the south-facing façade of the folly, before the addition of the gatehouse, there was a series of Gothic arches, and these arches, along with the crenellated battlements, contributed to its majestic appearance. Interestingly, it seems that the archway in the gatehouse was never actually used as a doorway. In fact, on the old photograph, it does suggest the existence of a painted oval, and it's likely been used as target practice for shooting, because there is damage and bullet holes in the brickwork. The folly was built on high ground, and it commands a view of the surrounding landscape. Its strategic placement made it visible from Sudbury Hall, adding to its visual impact. But unfortunately, the construction of the A50 has since bisected the park, obscuring the view of the deer coat from the hall. The deer coat's original design included a continuous arcade of the Gothic arches at ground level, although only 12 of these remain, Historical records suggest that there may have been a central double-width doorway flanked by smaller arches, and these openings likely had some way of blocking them to trap the deer internally when needed. Vernon's Folly is not just a historical curiosity, it's a testament to the architectural and cultural trends of its time. So make sure the next time you drive up the A50, you take a glance into the field and have a look at Vernon's Folly. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to check out my other local history videos.